Tim Boffman, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. Director of Track Safety and Medical. Yes. So you got a big job title there. Yeah. Um, taking a look at some of the equipment that you brought out here for us uh, to have a look at today. Obviously with the incident that happened with Stingray on, on Sunday, it's uh, it, seeing how you guys work, how quickly you get to things. For Stingray, the first thing you started with was that back brace that we've got over here, correct? Well, actually, the first thing we come off any, any incident is a fire bottle. And we carry a fire bowl, which is a wetting agent. Uh, it's designed to take the heat out of the fire. Uh, it makes water 20 times more uh, expansive to actually put out the water. So one gallon of fire bowl is equivalent to 20 gallons of water. Wow. Okay. And for Stingray in particular, uh, extracting him from the car, like that's got to be that's got to be a process, right? Yeah, so our team starts practicing in January. Uh, we have a, a team training, pull in the whole team. I have a roster of 32 people. Uh, we take 16 to every event. One time a year, preseason, we do a winter training where we bring everybody together. And we go through all the things that are, uh, you know, that are routine, standard things. Every person on our truck, so we have 12 people on three trucks, so we have, you know, four per truck. So. You have a crew leader driving the truck, you have a jump medic that's driving in the right, and then you have two fire rescue technicians in the back. Everybody comes off the truck with a, a job. You know, the fire, firefighter one comes off with the pressurized water can. Firefighter two is prepared to bring that short board and help with getting the driver out of the car. The paramedic always goes to the driver makes contact with the driver, finds out if, what their conditions are, and then make that determination whether we're gonna do an extraction or not. With Stingray Rob's situation, and you know we brought this, this aero screen into, into, into play in 2018, the car won't roll all the way flat on its top. It'll kind of turn to a side, but that's not enough for a driver to get out. The driver still cannot get out of that car in that position. So really the first job is that paramedic to get make contact with Stingray. Stingray told him that, you know, he felt a little sore, whatever, when, you know, we said we're gonna take, take, him, take him out. But the next job is to get the car up to a 90 degree. And that 90 degree does several things. It allows for the driver, if they're awake and alert and able, to climb out, okay? If they aren't, then it allows us to access the driver and start medical care and it protects the driver from any fire. So that, that side aero screen, we put it up to over a thousand degrees of temperature and, the, and it does not change the driver's temperature inside. So putting that car back to a 90 degree upright affords us a driver exit, access if we need to provide care and protects them from flames from the bottom if there's fuel burning underneath them or something. Three of us can put an Indy car up on its side. 1,700 pounds, that's a car that's fully intact, fully fueled, driver in it. We can bring it up to a 90 degree, but we can't take it all the way back to its wheels. So one truck showing up is enough to get that car in a position that, okay, now we're in a better place. Okay, at that better place, we pull in a second truck, we get enough people on it, six of us can lower the car down, put it on its wheels, and then we reassess the driver, in this case, you know, it was this case of Stingray, and say, do you think you can climb out of the car now? And, and Stingray helped himself up and out of the car. If he was unable, then we would use this short board to take him out. And it's basically designed, very short, made out of carbon fiber. Remember, an Indy car seat is formed to the driver's body. So there's very little gap between the seat. So this slides down between the driver. We put it up underneath their leg. So we have a strap under, and then, um, actually I can use you as a sure, demo yeah, if you don't yeah, mind. Do it, yeah. So we would slide this strap under, and I'm gonna ask for your assistance to grab that, pull it up here. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull these straps around. I'm gonna go around, and then that strap that you have goes in there first. Pull that in there first. Okay, now we're ready to take, pull you up and out of the car. Everything that's red is a grab handle. <laughs> so we can grab and pull you up and out of the car, keeping your head and neck in line with your back. Wow. So you're not injured. So yeah, so these are 
We designed this specifically for an Indy car, so these aren't manufactured, these are custom made to do the job. So if Stingray had hit something or another driver in a crash hit something and it pushes the side of the car in on the driver. So that's where we're our home ultra rescue tools come into play. This spreader is a totally battery powder unit, it's portable, uh, doesn't have cords like they used to. We used to have the big generator and cords. This thing comes off with all the power and because it's electric now, it has sensors built into the servos inside. It understands what kind of pressure it needs and it applies it. The other cool thing about this is that it, it can be taken in 10 meters of water, 30 feet, and operate which a lot of people say, well, you're taking electric tools down in the water and working. You go ahead, Scott, if you go ahead and exercise the tool out. But that's about 70,000 pounds of spreading force. Oh my God. So we could lift, we could lift that transporter up with, with this tool if we had to. So the idea with this tool is go ahead and spread it back out again. And can you hold it straight up for me, Scott? Is that it's wide, as it's wide here, it's taken it gets back to the driver's shoulders and hip width, and that's what we're trying to do is get the car back to a normal width, and then we can use the board to take the driver back out. That's incredible. One final question for you, just, sure. just about how you guys train um, and get everyone prepared for, for an IndyCar yeah. event. I mean, how many hours do you think you guys spend training, even in the off season? So first of all, I hire really good people. I have a lot of experience. I don't know, we've got, got a car coming in. Uh, so if we, uh, the guys have between six and eight years experience as firefighter rescue, paramedics, EMTs. So they bring that and then we apply that to this motorsports arena. So then they become, you know, take, okay, I take this skill set and then I can use it for this. And we train, we have a training tub. It's an actual Delara DW12 training tub and we probably do it 100 times through the years, or through a year, through a season, take the car driver out of the car. Not to mention the fact that we work on training burns. Uh, we, we review all of our incidents after each week, share them. Uh, but that time in January where we have the whole team together, that's where we standardize our approach, streamline it. As you said, we work very carefully to get there faster, very efficiently, and very safe to the drivers. And that's important because when you're trying to save a life, somebody that's critical, those seconds could really matter. You know, so in, in some cases, 30 seconds, two minutes may be the difference between somebody living or not living. Tim, this has been awesome. Awesome to learn. Really respect and appreciate everything you guys do for the drivers. Uh, this has been great. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Well, it's our pleasure, and uh, thanks for, uh, you know, getting it out there. Obviously, we have... Uh, you know, we have a group of very dedicated people and, and we have the support of IndyCar, Mr. Pinsky and, and the organization so that uh, they give us the right trucks, the right tools, and, and we have the right people. So, you know, that's a big part of it.